Today I'm going to give you the steps on how you guys can polish your RV or boat so you guys can go from this to this. Welcome back to Premier Auto Detailing in Kingman, Arizona. So we're going to get straight into this one guys. First thing you're going to want to do is have the vehicle cleaned, dried, ready to go. After that you want to do a panel prep, uh, some form of a wipe down, um, basically to remove any oils, chemicals, any anything that's left on the surface, any dust, any contaminants at all. So you can get right into the polishing. In the video, I think I'm using Chemical Guys Wipeout, but you can really use any of them. Or you can also use a mixture of isopropyl alcohol. After your surface area is all prepped, we're ready to get started. And we're going to be using Meguiar's M67 today. And it's a uh, one-step compound. Don't worry, I'll have the Amazon links down in the description. It's made specifically for marine and RV. So it's safe on gel coat as well. Gel coat generally takes a, a significant amount more abrasion to actually uh, remove the oxidation versus a standard clear coat on an automobile. So first you're going to want to start off by priming the pad. I usually use a waterless wash or a rinseless wash solution to do that. Um, you can just use the regular compound as well, but uh, here in Arizona, uh, especially working out in the sun, um, everything tends to dry exceptionally fast, so um, I usually keep the pad a little bit wetter than probably most people do. Once you have your product applied onto the buffing pad, uh, the polishing pad, um, you want to spread it around a little bit and on a low speed, usually around one or so, on um, using a Flex 3401 VRG. And that's kind of the lower speed for it. So once you have that done, uh, you're just going to start working the product onto the surface. Um, you can go left and right and then up and down, kind of uh, what's traditionally called a crosshatch pattern. It just helps to make sure that you don't miss anything and you want to overlap your um, pad by about 50%. So after you make your first pass, let's say from left to right, as you come back from right to left, you're going to go back over about 50% of the same area you already did. And usually you want to work an area somewhere around a 2x2, two two, uh, maybe a 3x3, three three. Uh, you know, it kind of depends on um, the temperature, the humidity, and you know, how fast everything's drying out. Usually you want to stay somewhere around shoulder width apart, um, that way you're not working too far out to the sides. Obviously when you're doing something high up like this and when you're on a ladder, you might have to stretch a little bit, but you want to be cautious and not overreach. Number one, it's a safety issue. And number two, you don't want to, uh, when you get to the end of your reach, you don't want to have your arms extended all the way where you're kind of lifting part of the polisher um, so you're not keeping a flat surface, a flat plane. It just helps you get a little more consistent finish on your polishing. Just keep working your way across, like I said, uh, you know, left and right and then up and down. Usually, um, it depends on how aggressive you want to be with the cut. Usually I would say probably around three to four passes total uh, combined left and right and up and down. So, um, you know, two left and right and then two up and down. And then take a nice clean towel, um, wipe off all of the polish residue and check your work. And of course you always want to be conscious of where your cord is, especially while you're working from a height up on a ladder. You don't want it to be in your way while you're either going up or down the ladder. You don't want to trip and fall, obviously. And you also don't want it rubbing up against the surface of something you just cleaned and polished. Usually I'll take something and kind of wrap the cord around the side of the ladder. That way it's completely away from the rungs and I don't have to worry about it. Again, I'm using the Meguiar's M67 with a Rupes DA Fine. I'm actually using the yellow uh, pad which is kind of their medium and from my experience I found this to be a pretty good combination for moderate uh, oxidation removal from RVs travel trailers um, you know boats and it still gives a nice finish at the end if you are looking for lighter I would say light to moderate oxidation removal and a little bit uh, less time consuming a little bit easier process um, I'll go ahead and put a link up in the top right corner there to a, another video that I did that um, it'll show you a much easier process um, on how to uh, clean and protect your RV and do light oxidation removal. It won't take a heavy cut off. It's not going to, you know, go as extreme as we are here, but it definitely makes a world of difference if you just need to clean it up a little bit. 
Another very important thing is to keep your pads clean. Um, there's a couple options here. You can either have multiple pads and keep swapping them out every few sections. On something this big, that's going to be a little bit more complicated to do uh, just because of the amount of pads you would actually need to do it. Um, you know, when you're looking at a 30 foot travel trailer and, you know, you're only swapping pads every two or three section passes, uh, you're going to go through a lot of pads. The other options would be a mechanical pad washer or a brush like this, which is basically kind of a stiff bristled brush. Um, it's just made for cleaning pads. It gets into the foam and gets all of the spent compound out of the pores, so it opens it back up. Uh, if you don't clean them often, you are going to work way harder and way longer to get less results. Another option that I do often is I will just have a small bucket sitting there with a little bit of a all-purpose cleaner mixed into some water. As I go through and the pad needs cleaned, I'll just take one off, throw it in the bucket face down, let it sit in there while I throw a new pad on and keep working. After I've got probably, you know, three, four pads in the bucket, then I'll go through and kind of wring them out by hand and clean all of them at the same time and start over. Compressed air also works really well if you have an air compressor close by. And you definitely want to make sure you get into all those tight little areas in the corners where pieces of, uh, you know, different angles meet up. That way you don't have any spots that you missed and you need to go back over. So you always want to check your work after you're done with each section and make sure that you got everything you needed to. You have a lot of irregular areas and angles like this where it's around the lights that you definitely want to make sure you really get in there pretty tight. So don't be afraid to turn your polisher on the side a little bit on the end. Um, you know, just use the uh, outer portion a little bit, you know, the last half inch or so. So you can really get in there really tight and get a good finish. All right, now that you have everything cleaned and polished, let's get some wax on it and protect it. And here we are going to be using Meguiar's Flagship Marine Wax. Um, it's just a gel coat wax, so it's fine to use on marine uh, or recreational vehicles, you know, RVs, fifth wheels, travel trailers, things like that. Anything with a gel coat, it's going to be great. You're just going to apply it like a traditional wax, um, put it on, wait till it hazes up after a minute or two, and then buff it off with a soft, clean microfiber towel. So for the wax application, I'm actually going to use a Flex battery powered polisher. It's a PXE80. I'll have the link down below as well. But it, it doesn't have the same amount of noise, heat, or weight as a full polisher. It, it does a smaller surface area. It's only, I believe, a three and a half inch pad that's on there. So you don't cover as much ground, but we're just putting on wax. So it's a pretty quick, fast, easy process anyway. And it's still considerably faster than doing it by hand. After you have the wax on, just take a clean, fresh, soft, good quality microfiber towel and buff it off and you'll be good to go. And like I said, if you want a faster, easier process without having as much equipment or products, um, check out the link in for my other video. It basically, it shows you how you can add about six months of protection, do light oxidation removal, and it only takes a couple of hours to do the entire thing. Uh, it's much faster and easier and less time consuming and you don't have the, you know, the investment of having a polisher. So if you want to do it by hand, it's, it's about the fastest, easiest way I know how to that you're going to get really, really good results. And if you guys enjoyed the video or you found it useful in any way, um, you know, go ahead and hit the like and subscribe button. Um, it really helps our small channel grow. And uh, that way we can get out there and be seen by more people and hopefully help more people as well. Leave us a comment down below. Tell us what you like uh, about the video, what you don't like about the video. You know, what type of products you, you like to use on and how you take care of your own RV or, or boat. And uh, we'll get back to you as soon as we can. You know, I, I really love seeing comments and try to reply to all of them as fast as I can. Um, it's great to have the interaction with you guys. So thank you.